If you'd like to stick around and do a quick Q&A, that's fine. That'd be great. I'd love to talk to people. And uh, I'll answer all your burning questions to the best of my abilities right now. So let's get into it. Other than that, thanks for showing up. I appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one. Let's get into Q&A. Da, da, da. Favorite part of the day. <laughs> I guess you talk too much. Probably so. Uh, Paul, the Fed is doing a rug pull right about now. If rug pulls and Ponzi schemes and things like that, uh, let me introduce you to Social Security and pensions. <laughs> Sorry, that's just the truth. So here's a good question. August, Rob, what do you think about VET as real use case like XRP has too? I think they both have good use cases. I've always said XRP is a great use case. The thing was that screwed them was that uh, they got sued, uh, Ripple, uh, SEC screw, uh, sued Ripple, and it put them on a really bad path to really capitalize. So in America, of course, no one's going to touch that. But globally, it looks to be a great remittance system and can really save you a lot on those fees uh, as you move money around. And of course, with on-demand liquidity or ODL, that would be great because that means banks don't have to pre-fund everybody. I thought it was going to be a winner, but whatever. VeChain or VET, I thought that was great for a tracking software. And also, uh, because when I was in the health ind healthcare industry, it was a big thing with uh, recalls, especially with medication. If we could do tracking uh, with all that, and then it could you know, tell us like, okay, we, we have all these different medications and they're on this, these states and these cities and these pharmacies. We need to make sure that people don't take those. I think that could save a lot of lives. Then, of course... Also with uh, forgeries and frauds uh, for like Gucci bags or whatever else. Yeah, I can see it actually working. The real thing is it can work, but how many people are adapting VeChain to a global powerhouse? I don't think that's really happening right now. I think there's certain pockets that are using it, but not to where it should be. And that's the big thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is a good point. The Federal Reserve is not federal. It does not have any reserve and it's not a system. And it's about as federal as Federal Express. Yes, you're right. If you ever want to see a great documentary on Federal Reserve, just search for Zeitgeist, Z-E-I-T-G-E-I-S-T -E -E movie. The first one, not the other ones. Those ones are kind of weird. But the first one, great information. It's the last section. There's three sections. One's about religion, which I don't talk about, especially on this channel. Uh, the next one is 9-11, and this, then the last one is the Fed and money. And it's pretty bad. What's the app name? What does it do? Sweatcoin. That's it. And uh, again, links in the description. It's like there's like a little running man. You can download it. It's free. And what's great is that when you get the Sweatcoins, you can like buy stuff on their little, their little uh, marketplace. I got to be honest with you, it's not the great market. It's not the greatest place. Like the best thing I bought was like some earphones or some yeah, some little earbuds, but that's about it. It's not, it's not like you're going to buy a car so or a Lambo. Uh, Crypto Beats, anyone knows there's a date for the Mt. Gox Unlock? We did a, a video about this last week, and it looked like uh, September 8th or September 12th is when, was it September or August? Damn it. Now I forget. Let's see. And, and the wording was very, here we go. Let me show you my screen. This was the one that we had referenced. 140,000 Bitcoin could be dumped. Da -da 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 -da. Mt. Gox creditors were sent a correspondence date July 6th. And I got to tell you, that's a lot of Bitcoin to dump on the market, 142,000. I know some people say they won't sell it. <laughs> sure. Uh, okay. Restriction reference period from approximately the end of August until all are part of the repayments made. So... End of August, continuing on is who knows when. So, uh, yeah, just to be aware of that. And uh, I would, I got to tell you, the Mt. Gox hack was in 2014, right? So people were adding in 2013. Do you know how much the price of, of Bitcoin was back then? It was like under a grand. So if you've been holding cents, let me do some quick math. Eight, it was like eight years or something like that. Would you not sell a little bit of your Bitcoin, especially if you bought it at like 100 bucks and you had, I don't know, 30 of them? I'd probably sell some. Just saying. But people are like, ah, oh, you don't understand because they know it's going to go up. Yeah, sure. Sure, buddy. Maybe. Beardy took off. Oh, man. Who's going who's gonna to wrench up people? Yes. 
Yes, Amy, you got a Amy Johnson softball. Awesome community. Jarky's here. Where is he? Ah, Jarky's a new mod. Congratulations, Jarky. What does a wrench do? Who wants to be a moderator? You get a wrench, and you get a wrench, and you get a wrench. Let me show you something. Hold on real quick. <laughs> uh, DeFi Dad. Rob, why not disclose earlier about Simon giving the information at the conference? I don't know what you're talking about. I have, seriously don't know what you're talking about. You have to tell me exactly what that is. Uh, who wants to be a moderator? Oh, Crypto Boomer. It's been around forever. So you get a wrench. Smiling Bob. Zeitgeist is an excellent documentary. That's true. Capocan, you already want, I believe. Okay, Bronco, answer my question, Rob. What's the question? Sorry, me, Amy, I don't know who you are. <laughs> I've only seen you once, sorry. Um, that's, why SK, I don't know what happened to you. You were right there. Oh, SSF. Rob, you serve with any infantry battalions. A, a small stint, I was with the 31st Cash. And then we took place when, this was in 2001? 2001, yeah, so they went over to, was, yeah, they went over to, F, to Iraq. Then I worked in the ICU and the burn unit, and then we did a rotation. Let's see. What's your favorite stable coin? USDC right now. That. Okay, so there we are. Pretty good. Where did I go? Where'd everybody go? Awesome. All right. Where else are we? What did I miss? <laughs> what about a fellow devil dog? Do the wrenches stay from video to video? Yes, they do. So once you're a moderator, you're always a moderator until I take it, take it away. But Nick says, Rob, what do you think about to buy a euro? Is it one to one? Are we talking about the euro stable coin or just euros? I'm not for sure. The euro stable coin, which, was, which came out from Circle, was supposed to be, well, they say is backed, but it's not going to, it needs regulatory approval from what I understand. <laughs> Neil Diamond, Neil Dayerman. Why do you think Sol is a scam? I don't think it's a scam scam. I think people are, People are suing the company, but that doesn't mean it's a scam. Remember, uh, SEC is suing Ripple. And also investors in 2018 sued Ripple as well because they said this is a security. That's why I think that we should just start saying everything's a security and let, it, and let everybody re register it with the SEC and then go from there. And then all these crap junk projects that are hanging around, number you know, 5,724, they're not going to be able to afford that. And then they just get absorbed or dissolved. It's a harsh thing to say, but it's just the truth. Uh, favorite place to buy crypto. Right now I'm buying it on Coinbase. And also I opened up an account with Strike with uh, Jack Mahler's thing. It's very easy, very easy app to use. But if you want to get to a higher limits, you have to do KYC and AML. You can dodge a wrench and get bottom ball. <laughs> Mount Gox in a dump on us like it's 2018. You can look at it two ways, guys and gals. So let's say in that time frame, the end of August, people do get released their Bitcoin and they do start dumping on the market and it starts to go way down. But let's say, and here's the thing. You know all your friends who said, I would have bought Bitcoin when it went below 20K? I bet you they didn't do it today. I bet you they didn't do it. And then when it goes on to 14K, which is what people, a lot of people say are, is the next uh, stopping point, they still won't buy it. People won't buy Bitcoin 
until it's like a penny or something crazy like that, which it'll never go to. So the question is, when the Mt. Gox people come in, they do sell, which I believe they do. I, maybe I could be wrong. Been, I'm wrong plenty of times. But uh, if that happens and it does go down to 14K, what do you do? Do you think like, ah, crap, this thing will never go up? Or will it be like a pretty good opportunity to maybe, maybe purchase? And again, this is where the dollar cost averaging, depending if you want to do it once a day, once a week, once a month, or you do value cost averaging, which is you save up all your funds. And then on one day or one part of the week or one part of the month or one part or a quarter, you dump, you buy up that, that investment, that asset. Would that not be a pretty good time to maybe wait? Yeah, maybe it's up to you. All right. Yeah, one step. I don't know where you're from, but like here, like I saw, I'm in Texas now. I signed up for it. The only thing they had me do was to link my bank account and I got up to a thousand dollars I could buy. And that was like the limit. So I'm not sure. Maybe every, every, every jurisdiction is different. Huh. Well, here we go. John looking very dapper in his picture. Mount Gox creditors are not selling like most expect. IR1. Okay. Let's see how it goes. That'd be great if they didn't. So here's the thing. I'm also being this month, 205,000 steps. I don't show up. Yeah, it's because I have to follow you. So what we're going to do is there's going to be some certain rules for the sweat coin, which I have to put on the website over at Dan Teaches Crypto, 100% free, just so you know. And the rules are you can only, if you win twice, it's two and out. So you, you that gives more people opportunity to win. Like there's... Uh, like uh, autistic cryptic, uh, he beat the pants off me the last two months. And like he beat everybody badly. And I think he's one of those guys who has a job that just, he constantly moves. He was a mailman or something, I don't know. So that's the one rule. And the second rule is, is that at the end of the month, if I'm gonna post the top three people, and if you can beat those, and you can show me on a screenshot that yes, I did, you're gonna give me your username so I can follow you and verify it. And then you'll take that place and you'll have up to, I'm gonna say three to five days. I haven't figured it out. I we'll say three days. I'll give you three days from the time that I post it to when you can say, no, that's not right. I beat number two and here is my steps. So yeah, I wish they would just let me to auto follow everybody, but they don't do it. Well, it depends. He thinks Sweatcoin is more utility than BAT. Look, what does what does everybody use basic attention token for right now? What have you used it for? Well, I mean, the browser is awesome. I am using it right now, the Brave browser. It's great. Uh, it allows me to bypass all the crappy ads as much as possible. Of course, I do have to turn it on sometimes because sometimes the functionality gets, gets a little bit delayed. And of course, I can earn basic attention token. But then with the BAT token, what exactly am I using it for? And here's another thing. With the actual, again, the app is what's great. The browser is what's great. Sweatcoin, what can you do with it? Right now, not much. I mean, you can buy things in the, um, in the uh, uh, shopping center or whatever else that they have there. But other than that, it doesn't really do too much. And that will only happen when they lock it on September 12th. If you want to take a look at what they do, it does seven different things as far as utility goes. And one of those things is you're going to be able to sell your data to whoever you want to. Crazy, right? Well, it's not too crazy if you think about Facebook. Did anybody pay you for all the data that, you, that uh, they sold to all these marketers? I'm going to say no because they didn't do that to me. Anyhow, there's a link in the description. <laughs> Let me just show you what it is. There's the link right here. And then here's the deep dive video. That's on my second channel, Dan Degen. And if you're, if you're wondering why I named it Dan Degen, it's so you know that if you invest in those things, just kiss your money goodbye. It's mostly gambling. Jarky, thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate it. Save your money, buy some assets, but thank you. <laughs> Do we, need a, do we need a near wallet to sell our sweat? That's going to be in phase two. So they rolled it out in September. I think in November, that's when they start to roll out the centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges where you can 
mitigate and sell off your uh, tokens or what I will probably be doing is staking them. Uh, yeah, use bat to tip content creator. That's great. Jason, what's up? I see you're still feuding with all the other. <laughs> Jason likes to tussle with all the, all the YouTubers. With like, uh, what's his name? Kevin and the, the guy with the big head. I forgot his, the other guy's name. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's entertaining. Timmy, morning, Rob. 4 a.m. gym session, Australia. Looking good. Never skip. Never skip gym day or leg day. I just don't skip arm day. Let's see. Here's a good question. Saiful Saeed. Hi, Rob. If you want to build a portfolio with small amounts of DCA, 100 bucks a week, uh, how many crypto should you go for? Should you go for small cap or big cap? <sighs> this is such a loaded question. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, and of course, not your dad. So the thing is, is I can only tell you what I would do. It depends on the, my time frame. You have to understand, I'm old. And like I've already accumulated a good amount throughout my lifetime. So I'm just more of a safety person. I just want to just, you know, to me, I'm like, well, who cares about a thousand X, 2000 X, right? But if I lose all my capital, that part is not what I want. So I want to retain that and be safer. So what I do personally is I invest in a whole plethora of things. One of those is land. Other one is real estate. Also put things in my Amazon FBA business. Also do a lot of things with staking. And then also uh, Masterworks. I invest into like a very small 5% of my portfolio it goes into uh, these art pieces, which, uh, it's fractionalized share of art link in the description. You can check it out and it's registered with the sec. That's the bigger thing. So for me, it's all about safety and I'm just going to invest in as far as like crypto right now, Bitcoin, Ethereum, because that's, what's usually going to go up first. Then the altcoins will start pumping later and I'll get into that later, but not right now. I think it's a bad choice. And I don't put a lot of my disposable cash because me and my wife are waiting on the sidelines for the housing market to crash, which we think it's going to. It's not going to happen overnight, but I think in the next 12 to 18 months, probably a good time to get some deals. And then of course we buy those up, flip them over into Airbnb and Verbo or short-term rentals. Things work out great. However, maybe you're somebody who's younger. Sifel, maybe you're 18, 19 years old. It's like, you know what? I got a lot of time. Here's what you have to do is take a look at the market cap. The market cap of Bitcoin, what? Let's take a look. Is almost 400 billion, okay? So for the price to go from 20,000 to 40,000, well, the market cap has to go up pretty considerably, right? So if you wanna be safe, dollar cost average, and then of course, let me, ref let me rephrase this before I go on. What's the rules, everybody? The rules are never invest more than you, you can afford to lose, meaning, well, exactly what I say. Don't, don't invest more you can afford to lose. Just think to yourself, it's all gone, especially in crypto, because it's really speculation and gambling. Let's just be honest. So if I can think to myself, well, it's all gone, I'm going to think twice before putting my entire uh, retirement account into tomato coin or some crazy, stupid uh, crypto. So it's all gone. The next one is everything's a scam. You treat everything like a scam, uh, you're going to be a much happier person. Verify, don't trust. The next one, don't leave anything on exchanges. Nothing gets left on exchanges. No crypto left behind. And that's why we use a hard hardware wallet, cold storage. And if you're unsure of like how to use those, no big whoop, just go here. To and teach us crypto. It's free. It's 100% free. I made it free because not everybody can afford whatever I was going to, I don't know, five bucks a month or whatever, because I wanted to be global and people understand. So if you go to chapter, t the module two, I go over what's a crypto wallet, public and private keys, setting up your nano ledger, the live app, transferring crypto, deleting the restore nano ledger, which is important and so on and so forth. So uh, that's that. No leverage. 25, 50, 100X is just crazy in my opinion, but I'm not a trader. And then take profits along the way. So that means like when I was talking about this, whatever you get into, let's say you put in a hundred bucks, right? Maybe you want to doubles. Maybe you take that, that, that hundred bucks back out 
and leave the other 100, which is house money, let it ride for a while. Or again, if you're younger, maybe you take some more bigger risks. Maybe you say to yourself, wow, maybe I want to get on this crazy Voyager nonsense pump and go that route. That's just gambling though. But my thing is just, what's the cut? If you're looking at different projects, how big is the community? How does it get driven? What's the utility? What does it do? What does it actually have function for? Is it just a me too product? What has a team done before? And how much can I actually look at the team for what they've done to see where they're going to go? And the last one is tokenomics. Am I going to get dumped on? So for me, I kind of, if it was me and I was younger and I want to be a little more risky, I would probably take a look at, you know, the basics, Bitcoin, Ethereum, maybe that's 50% of my portfolio. And then the other 50 or 25 or 30, whatever it is, is like some more lower cap gems, maybe some layer one solutions, which people are building on, such as like Polkadot and Avalanche and Cardano and stuff like that. And then just kind of rip it from there. Again, when you go down the market cap, it's a lot easier to double your money when you're at, oh, I don't know, a billion dollars. What is this for Ave? As opposed to, because for Ave to go from, what is this? To go from 77 bucks to 140 bucks, the market cap is go from a billion to 2 billion. That's pretty, that's not, that's not unreasonable, not crazy. As opposed to tomorrow, you know, 400 billion going to 800 billion. That's what I'm trying to say. That's it. Hope that made sense. Yeah, nice to see over a thousand viewers. It is, it's amazing actually. And especially because I never have good news. <laughs> like, ah, man, some days I have like the worst bearish news and people still show up. Thank you. Uh, oh, I missed some. Sell is up 30%. I think that's because they're trying to do that short squeeze, which good luck for you to those people. Uh, Lady Fitness, Lady Thoroughness. What? Modest man. <sighs> Mona. Uh, it's been a nice one for me. So that's pretty good. Bad news is, yeah, really, yeah, it's a good point, Prometheus. Bad news is good news. Because if you take a look at these CPN numbers, people are like, oh, that sucks. And I was like, that's great. That's exactly what I was waiting for. Then off you go. And that's it. Uh, honest and funny. Well, I think you're half right. I think I'm honest. The funny part's debatable, but thanks, man. I do appreciate that. <laughs> Have you ever looked into property brokers in Australia? Would you ever? No. I'm gonna tell you why. Because we only buy property where we live. Because this is just a tip. This is not financial advice, but it's a tip that I would take to heart and consider. If you're gonna buy real estate, make sure it's where you live. Because here's an example. We bought a uh, property in Florida at one point. And for us to manage that, even though we had a management company who was working for us, there's a lot of things that you want to do like hands-on type of things. And if you're not there in the state, it's a bit tougher. So just to me, it just makes sense to buy real estate where I'm at and we can have a little bit more control and uh, we can uh, react to different situations a lot faster and better. So that's just how it is. Because people like to, they're like, oh, I'll buy some property here and here and here across the country. I'm like, that's not, you can do it. Just I wouldn't do it. That's just me. And that's it. <laughs> cool. All right, everybody. So that's it for today. Uh, the, I think we all know what's going on. Uh, we all know where things are at today. Probably a sideways day. I don't see a lot of action except if you've, you've got a bunch of VGX tokens crazy. But that's it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, all that great stuff. Consider subscribing to this every single day. I show up every single day. Again, just like the military. Get your right uniform. Just show up, take the hits, move on. That's it. So thanks so much, everybody. Appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. Adios.